Hello everyone, <clears throat> welcome to another video and today I'm going to be talking about the Macho Man Randy Savage and his top 10 matches in the WWF. So Randy Savage came to the WWF in the year 1985 and fans were immediately impressed with the charisma and the wrestling ability of the Macho Man Randy Savage. So every wrestling fan knows who the Macho Man is. Um, the signature voice, the signature catchphrase, the beautiful, beautiful outfits that he would come to the ring with. Very, very colorful character was the Macho Man, Randy Savage. So here we go. Coming in at number 10 on this list, Hulk Hogan challenging the Macho Man Randy Savage for the WWF Championship at WrestleMania 5 in April of 1989. So, <clears throat> most people consider this Hulk Hogan's best matchup in the WWF ever, and I can see why. In this matchup, the history lesson behind this matchup was um, one year earlier at WrestleMania 4 in 1988, the Macho Man Randy Savage would defeat not one, not two, not three, but four opponents to win the undisputed WWF Championship in a single elimination tournament. And in the finals, we saw Savage defeat the million dollar man Ted DiBiase with the help of Hulk Hogan, um, who was at ringside to counter the evil plots by Ted DiBiase, who had Andre the Giant in his corner. Fast forward one year later to WrestleMania 5 in 1989, this was billed as the Mega Powers Explode. And we saw all the things that led up to this um, right before the matchup. Hulk Hogan, um, Randy claiming that Hulk Hogan had lust in his eyes for Elizabeth. And this would set the stage for WrestleMania 5. And then the slap to Hogan um, about a month earlier on but actually back a couple of months earlier on an episode of the main event when Hogan took Miss Elizabeth to um, the backstage after she was knocked down at ringside. And this set the stage for a really, really good matchup here, a really stellar main event. Um, we saw Randy bring out the best in Hulk Hogan as far as wrestling ability goes. Hogan actually showed in this match that he's capable of pulling out, you know, a lot of wrestling moves uh, that he possesses. And yeah, um, it was a really, really good match. Of course, you have to have Elizabeth involved. Elizabeth at some point was dejected from the ringside area as she was in a neutral corner. And there was a point where Randy even grabbed her by the chin and told her to get out of here. And it was at that moment, the referee summoned her to go back, get out of here. And then we had a one-on-one -on -one matchup with no distractions at all in it. And we saw Savage working over Hogan's bloody eye, um, you know, and just um, being a heel, a heel as, as, as heelish as can be behind the referee's back, choking out Hogan with the tape to the referee's blind side with the wrist tape. Um, and then at some point he also targeted, targeted um, Hogan's throat we saw that one spot where he draped him over the barricade and then he came down with the flying axe handle on the back of Hogan. And then he would hit Hogan with the high-flying elbow off the top rope. By the way, that elbow was wrapped heavily, um, was bandaged up heavily because Randy went into that match with a staph infection that not too many people knew about. So, yeah, that was another thing. He was wrestling injured at the time and as the match was over, he had to go and get that drained and was out for a little bit but not too long um, anyway the end came when Hogan kicked out of the elbow drop um, punches to the to the head the big boot and then the leg drop and Hulkamania ends Randy Savage's one year plus reign as the World Wrestling Federation champion in this classic classic match at Wrestlemania 5 your winner Hulk Hogan next Coming at number nine, the Macho Man Randy Savage defending the Intercontinental Championship against Jake the Snake Roberts. This happened on an episode of Saturday Night's Main Event in November of 1986. Uh, this matchup, um, you know, very underrated, very underrated, somewhat forgotten 
And this is a rare heel versus heel match. Um, this was before the blood feud that these two had against each other, which would come five years later in 1991. Uh, but this match here, November of 86, Saturday night's main event, rare heel versus heel match. We saw both men breaking the rules. And at one point, um, they started attacking the referee. They threw the ref, push shoved the referee. Um, then he was thrown to the mat, then thrown outside. And then both men were just notorious rule breakers. And the match ended in a DQ, a double DQ. Anyway, Savage retained the Intercontinental title. And this was pretty good for a TV match. A really, really good match. And these guys uh, showed that they're capable of going out there and, you know, um, giving the fans something to remember. And this would intensify five years later with the blood feud that they had that started in the summer of 91 and ended in the winter of 92. But, uh, but this matchup right here, very, very good and worth seeing. Your winner is, well... Um, Double DQ, but still the Intercontinental Champion, the Macho Man Randy Savage. Okay, coming at number eight. This match is from Saturday night's main event also, again. And this would happen in November of 1987. The Macho Man Randy Savage taking on Bret the Hitman Hart. And it's very weird to see Bret Hart as a heel in those early Hart Foundation days. But he was a heel here, and he took on the Macho Man. What can I say about this match? This matchup was a pretty good match. And this is the first time I believe these two ever touched one another at all in a ring. Anyway, it was what it was. Um, Brett, of course, with his technical expertise, telling a story throughout the match, targeting Randy's, um, Randy's leg. I forgot which leg it was, if it was the right one or the left one. But um, yeah, Randy was basically a one-legged man out there, but he told a good story where he was the underdog in that match, and despite all the odds, just trying to fight back, fight back against the against the stronger um, opponent, um, Bret Hart. And in this match, we saw Jim the Anvil Neidhart and Jimmy Hart at ringside. Um, interference from both, obviously. And then the end came when Randy picked, Bret picked Randy up from the outside of the ring, in a power slam attempt and on the way down the power slam attempt randy hooked the leg of bret hart on the way down and then he just like rolled him up for the pin one two three and the place exploded macho man randy savage victorious we would see jimmy hart and jim neidhart jump in there and attack um attack randy yes yeah, sorry i'm sorry guys yeah i just got a brain freeze for a second we saw Jimmy Hart and Jim the Anvil Neidhart get in there and they would attack Randy and then Bret Hart would, well, well Randy would fight off the Anvil and then um, that left Bret and Jimmy Hart in the ring. Bret would hold Jimmy Hart who would run towards Randy for the megaphone but Randy moved out of the way and the megaphone nailed Bret Hart and the crowd went crazy. Anyhow, um, your winner is Macho Man Randy Savage. All right, coming in next, my number seven pick, the Intercontinental Championship on the line, the Honky Tonk Man defending against the Macho Man, Randy Savage. So this match, um, I can see why the Honky Tonk Man was such a good heel. He was such a good chicken shit heel, man, and everything that he did spelt heel. He knew how to get heat, and he knew how, for, how to get you to hate him. Um, he was the perfect heel, in my opinion. He went out there, he sold his ass off. He sold all the all the punches, the kicks, the suplexes that the heels were hitting him with. He knew how to sell it, and he was very, very good at what he did. Um, same thing here in this match. He sold Randy's offense to a T, and begging off like the cowardly heel, and just selling, selling his ass off and selling everything that Randy was throwing at him. The punches, the kicks, the chokes, the back body drops, the suplexes. And when he would gain an advantage, he would show like he would be desperate. Cheat at all costs, any chance you get. Anyway, um, this match ended in a disqualification when Bret Hart jumped into the ring and nailed Randy with an elbow on the back of the neck. And then the other members of the Hart Foundation, Jimmy Hart and Jimmy Anvil Neihart, ran in there. They kicked, they stomped Bret Hart, and then they set... Randy up so Honky Tonk Man could smash him with the guitar. So then Miss Elizabeth steps in front and she's begging, no, 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 leave him alone, leave him alone. Then Honky Tonk Man just 
just goes up to this woman and just shoves her out of the way, just pushes her out of the way as hard as you can push somebody off the mat. I think it was the camera work that made it look that way, but it looked like a really, really hard push. She shoved her, he shoved her down and she went down hard to that mat, man. That was just amazing when I saw that. Anyhow, um, so then they smash his head with the guitar, knocking him down. Miss Elizabeth will run to the back and moments later she will come out with somebody else we all know very well, brother. It's Hulk Hogan. So Hulk Hogan will come to the ring, clean house. Um, at that point, Randy would get back to his feet. They would fight off Jimmy Hart and the Hart Foundation. And then they stood back to back, turned around, and they stared at each other. And the stare down alone with one another. That place was just going ballistic. Those fans from the 80s are some of the best fans i ever seen. They was just cheering, cheering for that very moment. And then slowly, the, the two most powerful forces would come together like this in the form of a handshake. And right there, we would see the formation of the mega powers, which would be led by Miss Elizabeth in the next coming couple of years. And your winner by DQ, Macho Man Randy Savage. Honky Tonk Man retains the Intercontinental title. Okay, so my number pick choice, this is a tag team match. The duo of the Intercontinental Champion, Bret the Hitman Hart, and the World Wrestling Federation Champion, the Macho Man Randy Savage, taking on the world... No, sorry. Taking on the Nature Boy, Ric Flair, and the Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels. I almost said the World Wrestling Federation Champion because Ric Flair in 92, he did capture the WWF title on two separate occasions. So, my fault for that. This match took place in July of 92 at a TV taping. Um, this matchup was really, really good. We didn't get to see this match until about a year later on Coliseum Video when it was released on a VHS tape called Grudges, Gripes, and Grunts. I remember because I bought that tape back then when it came out. And this tag team match is like a dream match if there ever was one at that time. This matchup was very good, all men all four men involved did everything that they're, you're used to seeing them do as far as offense, as far as defense goes. Bret Hart with his excellent um, technical skills. Shawn Michaels with his high-flying ability. Ric Flair with his dirty tactics. Randy with his, um, with his technicalities also um, on the offense. And this match was really, really good. They got a decent amount of time, almost 20 minutes. And... The end would came would come when Sensational Sherry would jump up on the ring apron and Shawn Michaels would get flung into her by Randy and then Randy would roll up HBK for the pin. Your winners, Bret Hart and the Macho Man Randy Savage in this rare, rare tag team matchup that happened in 92. I'm so glad they released this match, got to see the light of day and it was a really, really good one. All right, coming at number five, the Macho Man Randy Savage defending the WWF Championship against the Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase in a 15-foot high steel cage. This match happened in Madison Square Garden in June of 1988. Everyone remembers the Savage DiBiase match from WrestleMania 4 where Savage won the title. Um, it was a basic average match, but to me in this match, three months later in Madison Square Garden, these two, they turned it up a notch. They turned it up a notch. And they really, really showed you what they're capable of. DiBiase selling the offense of Randy, selling it, selling his ass off and just bumping all over that cage for the Macho Man. Not exaggerated. And Randy um, just showing that he can garner sympathy from the WWF fans by just the things DiBiase was doing there. And Virgil, despite being outside of the cage, getting involved several times. There was even a spot in this match, well, not a spot, but there was something in this match that happened where a fan ran up the cage, and I think Virgil ran to try to fight off the, the, the person on top of the cage. And we saw Randy up there too, I think, taking a swing at him. It's been a while since I saw the match, but that crowd at Madison Square Garden, they were just electric for that cage match. I remember seeing that matchup like several years later when it was released on a Randy Savage um, DVD that came out back then, um, the, the collection. And 
The end came when DB, when Virgil tried to climb up the cage once again and get involved, and Savage fought him off, and he rammed DiBiase's head and Virgil's head together, just smashing them skull to skull. And Aaron, the way DiBiase fell off that cage, it was like he fell off a building, and he just like, boom, like that. Sorry. <laughs> he just hit boom, and he just fell. He just like fell hard hit the mat hard anyway randy climbed out of the cage and he won the match and he retained the wwf championship your winner macho man randy savage okay so number four the ultimate warrior taking on the macho king randy savage in a career ending match at wrestlemania 7 wow wow you talk about, wow, you talk about storytelling. This match had it all. Two months earlier at the Royal Rumble, we would see the Macho King Randy Savage cost the Ultimate Warrior the World Wrestling Federation Championship to Sergeant Slaughter. And then the issue got so personal and heated that that very night, Randy Savage was supposed to be in the Royal Rumble, but he feared for his life, so he left the building. And... Come WrestleMania 7, these two agreed to a career-ending match. My gosh, what a match. We saw the Warrior survive, I think it was five flying elbows from Randy Savage. And then we even saw Randy Savage kick out of the Warrior's signature press slam and splash. And... The drama that unfolded during this match was just amazing. Sensational Sherry got involved and she was just attacking the Ultimate Warrior every chance she got. And yeah, she was in there. She, You got to give it to Sherry, man. She, she could take bumps and she can fight it out with the best of them. She was also like one of the boys in the locker room. Just the most underrated female manager ever. Wasn't afraid to get in there and get hit and take blows and take bumps and stuff like that. But the end came when Warrior hit the shoulder block on Savage, three flying shoulder blocks that sent Savage flying outside of the ring. And then finally, after a hard fought battle, Warrior would place his foot on the torso of Randy and the referee counted three and the ultimate Warrior ended the career of the Macho King, Randy Savage. Disappointed, Sensational Sherry got into the ring and was very upset and berated, berated Randy for losing this match, calling him a loser, a nobody. And then we would see Miss Elizabeth jump the barricade and go after Sherry, tossing her out of the ring. And Randy Savage got up and he didn't realize what was happening and he just looked and Miss Elizabeth was right there. And when he looked, he saw her and he was in shock. And then the referee from the outside of the ring explained that it was Elizabeth, it was Sherry that was indeed doing a number on him and not Miss Elizabeth, that Miss Elizabeth had came to his rescue. Anyhow, Randy didn't know what to do. He was just conflicted. He was, had his head down, shaking his head. And then eventually the two embraced and they hugged. And what a wonderful, wonderful WrestleMania moment. One of the greatest WrestleMania moments with the reunion of Miss Elizabeth and the Macho Man Randy Savage and everyone involved in this matchup, even down to the referee, even down to the commentators. God rest their souls. They are sadly no longer here. And it just makes me sad to think about it. Anyway, your winner, the Ultimate Warrior. But as Gorilla Monsoon said on commentary, he may have lost his career, but he's got something much more valuable, his woman, which was Miss Elizabeth. And God rest all their souls. Your winner, your winner, the Ultimate Warrior. And the highlight of this match was not only the match itself, but the end with them celebrating. And it was such a beautiful, beautiful sight to see. Randy Savage and Elizabeth celebrating and reunited once again at the end of that match at WrestleMania 7. Okay, coming in at number three, Macho Man Randy Savage defends the WWF Championship against a young heartbreak kid, Shawn Michaels, who was accompanied by the sensational Sherry. This match happened only a couple of weeks after WrestleMania 8 in the WWF 
European rampage that happened in Sheffield, England, April of 92. April 19, 1992. This matchup, we saw Shawn Michaels. This was like a glimpse into the future for Shawn Michaels. We knew, we saw in this match, Shawn, this was Shawn Michaels' defining match. He showed what he was capable of doing in a high stakes matchup like this. We saw the high flying ability, all the stuff that Shawn Michaels knows how to do, tell a story. And Randy as well, you know, Randy knows how to tell a good story. And yeah, this match was just a classic. You, my words can't do it any justice. You just have to go and look at it for yourself. So the end came when um, <coughs> there was interference from Miss Elizabeth. There was a interference from Sensational Sherry. In the end, Randy ended up getting the pin on Shawn Michaels. I think he did it with the flying elbow. It's been a while since I've seen it, but um, it's a little foggy to me. I can't remember exactly what the finish was like. But I know that the Macho Man retained the title against Shawn Michaels in this very, very rare, rare matchup. I know they did meet several times also later on in 1993, but this match was also very, very good. I suggest any fan, you have to see this matchup. So Macho Man Randy Savage retains the WWF Championship here. Coming at number two, the Macho Man Randy Savage challenging the Nature Boy, Ric Flair, for the WWF title at WrestleMania 8. Oh my God, where do I begin with this matchup? We saw Ric Flair go on national television months ago before this match and claim that he had an affair with Miss Elizabeth. She was mine before she was yours. Woo! And those words just enraged Randy. Flair, week after week, was just showing all these altered photos of him and Miss Elizabeth hanging out by his pool, going horseback riding, and all that stuff. And the stage was set for this match at WrestleMania 8. They even threatened to show a naked centerfold of Miss Elizabeth on the, on the big screen in the Hoosier Dome at WrestleMania 8. And all of this enraged the Macho Man Randy Savage. He rushed out there, he attacked Ric Flair, and he put a beating on Ric Flair to the point where Mr. Perfect got involved, um, tossing brass knuckles to um, Ric Flair. And Ric Flair just nailing Randy with it in the jaw, almost knocking him out. And also we saw Randy do a, um, a, a axe handle off of Ric Flair, smashing his head into the barricade and bloodying, bloodying up Ric Flair um, in the forehead um, prior to Perfect interfering. And then we saw Mr. Perfect smash Randy's leg with a chair. And then when that happened, we saw... Miss Elizabeth come down to the ring accompanied by a whole bunch of um, officials, including Shane McMahon, a young Shane McMahon, who I didn't know that was at the time. So the ending came when um, Ric Flair tried to target the already damaged knee of Randy, and then Randy just blocked a punch, punched him in the skull, rolled him over, grabbed the tights, and pinned Ric Flair, and that Hoosier Dome just exploded. After the match, Ric Flair grabbed Miss Elizabeth and proceeded to take, what about me? What about me, huh? And then he smooched her right on the lips. That was a wet, wet smooch that he gave Miss Elizabeth. Randy, even more enraged now, attacks Ric Flair, jumps on him and punches him down. And then it was just, as Gorilla Monsoon told it, it's pandemonium here in the Hoosier Dome. And that place was just, of 67,000 people was just, 62,000, sorry, was just, electric for that whole thing and then we see the celebration where randy and elizabeth with the fireworks going off in the hoosier dome your winner and the new world wrestling federation champion the macho man randy savage okay my number pick number one pick ricky the dragon steamboat defends the intercontinental championship against the macho man randy savage at wrestlemania 3 so oh my gosh this match is every every wrestling fans favorite favorite matchup no other words can be said of how much this match has been praised over the years. Um, we know this backstory behind this match. Randy came to Ricky Steamboat, showed him the match, had it written down on paper, move for move for move for move, and he was testing Steamboat. All right, tell me what, tell me um, this spot, that spot. Um, Randy would name a number. Tell me what hold number 100 is, move number 103. You know, Randy was that. Randy was a perfectionist when it came to his matchup, his matchups. So that's why he carefully put this match together. So this would be 
the outstanding performance of everything else that happened on that card at WrestleMania 3 in March of 1987. Anyway, the end came when Randy Savage tried to grab the ring bell and nail Ricky Steamboat with it. That's how he injured his throat in the first place. He, tar he targeted the, the windpipe, the larynx of Randy Savage, crushed his, crushed his lar larynx, sorry, I can't say that word well, about six months earlier. And yeah, that's what led up to this match. And then Ricky had a slow recovery in regaining his voice and his ability to speak again. And this is what led up to the matchup. Anyway, Randy would go for the bell um, to try and injure Randy as the referee was knocked down. And then George the Animal Steel will, would also um, try to get involved. And he pushed Randy down, crashing Ra Randy crashed to the mat. And then Ricky would eventually get up. The, Ricky, the referee would regain consciousness. And then he would attempt to a power slam, a body slam on Ricky. But Ricky on the way down hooked the leg, grabbed the leg, and just hooked it and held Randy down for the one, two, three. And the place just went bananas. They went bananas and they just exploded with excitement. 93,000 fans, your winner and the new Intercontinental Champion, the Macho Man Randy Savage. This ma match is greatly praised by fans all over the world and is definitely one of the best, best matches. It's an inspiration to so many wrestlers coming up. I heard guys like Kofi Kingston say, this match with Ricky Steamboat and Randy Savage was his favorite matchup ever. Edge and Christian has also talked greatly about this match, saying it was a match that inspired them as well. And so many, many other aspiring wrestlers, I think certain wrestlers, I can't really name who they were, went on record in saying they, at one point, um, attempted to to um, duplicate this match, like like work out this match, move for move for move, just like how those two did in that matchup. So this matchup caused a lot of inspiration, inspired a lot of people, and I can watch this match every year, once a year, and I never get tired of it. <laughs> the best, the greatest, probably the greatest Intercontinental Championship match in WrestleMania history. The Macho Man Randy Savage against Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. One of the best and one of the greatest Intercontinental Championship match of all times. And you can hear in interviews, Ricky Steamboat talks about this match with great fondness, uh, fondness and how much, how much it means to him every time this matchup is, is brought to his attention. So that is my number one pick, Ricky Steamboat versus Randy Savage at WrestleMania 3. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to leave a comment downstairs. Be, comment, be sure to, sur to subscribe to my channel so I can give you more, more great videos and more wrestling content when I discuss these certain topics about whether it's top 10 or whether it's, you know, what, what's ever on my mind. You know, I'm just here to talk about it and have fun. And you guys are welcome to leave a comment about this video and tell me what you think. Um, so there were some honorable mentions also that I had in mind, but I just didn't have time to get into it. Um, so this video is going to end right now. And thank you guys for watching. And I really, really appreciate it. Thank you for taking the time to listen, to watch. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. All right, enjoy the rest of your day. I'll be back with another video in the very near future. And thank you guys, and hope you all have a good day. Peace.